are saying that um, you are being influenced by Honorable Sam George. I have master's degree as I sit here. Okay. Honorable Sam George can't influence me. Okay. Anytime you are following a leader, you see the good side of the leader. Okay. That does not mean the person is influencing you. I sit with Honorable Sam George as brothers. We talk, we discuss issues. You get it. Yeah. And so there are things that if it is not right, I tell him, boss, we can do it this way, this way or that way. And I'll call Honorable Sam George boss because, as you may be aware, yeah. I'm his personal assistant. Yeah. I work under him directly. Okay. And so there is nothing wrong when I call him my boss. You get it. Yeah. And so people that go about peddling falsehood and stuff, that I'm being influenced by him, there's no idea of truth in it. Okay. Those of you that have been with Hello everyone, this is Mr. Sparks and you are watching 2A TV Live. If I'm not doing anything, that's the only channel I watch live on YouTube. <laughs> There's been punchline, punchline across the world, you know that. Opportunities are happy every good day. No one look at clean pants. See, we are being through the lens. Developmental projects, the empty portion of the hundred cities that is being allocated to the district, his is five cd fifty pesos. Wow! So if someone is having five cd fifty pesos, and the district gets the ninety four cd fifty pesos, who should be held responsible when it comes to development? All right. So welcome to Two A TV on YouTube and Two A TV slash Radio on. Um, Facebook our account at Facebook you can go there and then like our page subscribe at 2a TV on YouTube and join our conversations and um, anytime we, we we come live so that you also be part of our conversations today um, we are fortunate to have one of the prominent people in Dowenia town not only in Dowenia but um, prominent person in the um, NDC party in the Ningo Pram Pram um, constituency and um, a conversation with him. We know that we will all learn something from today, whatever we'll be doing. So we would like you to stick and stay with us as we go for a, a short break and then we come back.
Um, so as we have said, mona wake wahona bo ne no feno le abed nego afle wakale ne bana ni senyo ni impin le le ka no kome alo no kone pie NDC party or enge nigo pran pran constituency o me. So we all know him, most of us know him, and then we would like to know a little bit about him. We are here to interact with him. That is uh, Honorable Abed Nego Afle. He is here, and then we would like to go straight to him and then have a, a word with him or have a conversation with him. So Honorable, you are welcome to 2A TV. Thank you very much. Um, we, are, we, are, we are blessed to have you at this moment. I want to um, say you are welcome again. Thank you. Um, you won the... Uh, constituency youth organizer and we want to congratulate you on that as well thank you uh, before we start with our conversation so uh, we want to know who is mr abed nego afle who is mr abed nego afle all right thank you very much and uh, uh, just rightly as you said my name is abed nego mama afle okay a native of pram pram okay i come from a family of four Okay. My father is from Pram Pram, Chawenya to be precise. Okay. And my mother happens to be Anewe from the Volta region. Okay. I am the firstborn of four four children of my parents. And so Abenewa uh, Play is an astute person. Okay. Very humble, very calm but very straightforward. Okay. Uh, for now, that is what I can say about <laughs> okay. Abednego. All right. Um, so, Mr. Abednego, um, today our our conversation will be very brief. Sure. Um, and we want to we want to know. Um, Nipi Hinde Kisano, um, Abednego, Abednego. Uh, just ended election in Epio. Nihinde ko election or Neji wa wa Papa alo wa MP Neji MP. Uh, Honorable Sam uh, Nate George, legend on a a a numoke a his son or by force. Uh, ne abaleka eko menge deke um, ne eko okale nenge ni chun nualo um, okale nenge office kake mi oje ne pe ibaleja. Wala wabi ka ke ke nge nuko kanga kena adio. How true is that? Because other people went around saying that um, uh, our Honorable Minister uh, or Member of Parliament for Ningo Pram Pram. Um, Honorable uh, Sam, Samuel Nati George was the one who, um, uh, by his power, gave you the opportunity to be the youth organizer for the constituency. How true is that? Well, uh, people have divergent views, yeah. and they they have every right to say whatever they say, they think and feel is better for them. Okay. But before I come to that, I would like our viewers and our listeners to know that. Yeah. I've become an active member of the party since okay. the year 2000, and for the past 22, 23 years, okay. I have played various roles in the party, okay. right from branch through to the constituency. Okay. I met Honorable Sam George somewhere in the year 2015. By then, I was a communication officer in one of the branches in Dawenya, Agege branch. Okay. You can ask everyone, every member of the party, the roles I have played when it comes to NDC. So and it, it means that um, you have been in the party for a very long time. I've so. been in the party for a um, long So time. How, how was it from the scratch, from the branch level, what happens at the grounds? Because someone may be doubting. Someone may be doubting. How did you climb to where you are now? Okay, so before before I come to I came to the constituency, yeah. I was the just as I said, branch communications officer. Okay. Agege branch to be precise. Yeah. Those days it was one of our fathers, may he still rest in peace. We all call him Odash. Oh, okay. He was the branch communications officer. Okay. And then he rose through the ranks. It got to a time that he called me. He has seen potentials in me, okay. and so he's asked me to come and play that role. So my first one has to be an appointment oh, okay. by him. After that, I went on to contest for the communications officer, oh, okay. and I won in that branch. Oh, okay. uh, you know, when it comes to NDC, it has a lot of work to do yeah. in the branch. We happens to be the mouthpiece of the party when it comes to the grounds, yeah. and so. There is nothing in NDC 
with regards to the constituency in Dawenya. Okay. That when you are mentioning names, you will leave a bad neighbor. And so I have done a lot of things on the ground. So it means that out of your hard work from the branch level to um, the constituency level, that was what pushed you or that was what uh, made people vote, vote for you or voted for you? Sure. And you know, before I became the youth organizer, okay. I've been the constituency before. Okay. I happens to be a constituency executive member. Okay. And that one too, I contested. Okay. It wasn't by an appointment. Okay. I contested the position and I won. And so when people say that it is true, Honorable Sam George, that is how come I became a constituency youth organizer. Okay. I laugh because sometimes people really don't know what they are saying. Okay. And when you go through the entire constituency, yeah. there is no one who is an active member of the party that will tell you since Abed assumed the position of the constituency executive member, he hasn't worked. So it was through that elections as a constituency executive member and the various rules I served for the past four years, okay. that is how come the people have seen that, no, it is better for me to be the youth organizer. And so they repose that trust in me. So, Everywhere we go. So, so we want to ask, what motivated you to um, go for this constituency youth organizer? Okay, so just as our constitution made mention of, it says anybody who leads the party okay. as an MP, we have to rally our support behind okay. the person. Okay. But go to a time that there happens to be factions okay. in, in, a, in the party. Okay. Some people are for a certain group of people. But for me, loyalty is my utmost priority. And so wherever I found myself, whoever leaves the party, I make sure that I prove that loyalness to the person. Okay. And so I've dedicated my life and everything to serve the MP. We were once serving Honorable Yiti Mesa. Okay. The people said it is enough. And so this is the candidate they want. Okay. Who happens to be Honorable Sam George. Okay. And so once everybody says that this is the candidate we want, and it was through election, and Honorable Sam George happens to lead the party, it is our priority and our right to follow him, to make sure that he succeeds. Okay. And so I've said upon myself, there is no way I'm going to support anybody else apart from the one leading the party. Okay, okay. So it means that you mo no one pushed you to go in for... Nobody. And so when, when there was that faction, yeah. the youth, I mean, the, the youth organizing position, okay. there is somebody there, yeah. okay? But what the person has to do, I wouldn't say that he didn't do some, but it wasn't up to expectation. Okay. Because they happen to be on one side. Okay. They don't want to work with their MP. That is the hard truth. Okay. People refuse to say. But I'll go straight and say it. They don't support the MP in anything. Okay. And so even when I became the constituency executive member, okay. I'll be playing the role of the youth organizer already. Really? Behind bars, yes. Wow. Because I have put upon myself that come four years, okay. I'm going to contest the youth organizing position. Okay. And so I have prepared way back before it got to that time. All right. And so the person I contested, rather than 80 people voted. <laughs> you know what happened? No. He had 41 votes. Out of 180. Out of 180. So, so then it means that the people trusted and believed in I you. I tell you. So it is not only a, it is not about Sam George. Okay. It is about the work I have done previously. Okay. And the trust they repose in me. Okay. They feel that I have to move a step ahead. And so it is only better that they hand over that position to me. Um, some, some people are saying that um, you are being influenced by Honorable Sam George. And that is why sometimes, you, as you said earlier on, that you are straightforward. Some people are saying that you are, you are being influenced. He's the one who um, tells you what to do, what not to do. And so it's like you are, you are, you are, you are taking characters from him, and then that is what you are living with. Uh, I don't know, but um, if only maybe as a father, the one you are serving, um, you are learning something from him, that one we don't have any problem. But we want to find out, is it true that you are being influenced by Honorable Sam George? Come on. So 
beloved viewers, <laughs> I would like to say something. You see, yeah. seated here, I am not, excuse me to use my language, an illiterate. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I've been to various schools. Yeah. I have a master's degree as I sit here. Okay. Honorable Sam George can't influence me okay. in any other way. Okay. He's a human. Yeah. He has his good side, he has his bad side. Yeah. Anytime you are following a leader, you take the good side of the leader. Okay. That does not mean the person is influencing you. I sit with Honorable Sam George as brothers. We talk, we discuss issues. You get it. Yeah. And so there are things that, if it is not right, I tell him, boss, we can do it this way, this way or that way. And I'll call Honorable Sam George boss because, as you may be aware, yeah. I'm his personal assistant. Yeah. I work under him directly. Okay. And so there is nothing wrong when I call him my boss. You get it. Yeah. And so people that go about peddling falsehood and stuff, that are being influenced by him, there's no idea of truth in it. Okay. Those of you that have been with me in Dwayne, yeah. you know my character. Sure. You know the way I am. Yeah. And so if I'm being influenced by Honorable Sam George, you, you can you can tell the public yourself. Okay. It is it is rather good that you learn under your leader. Sure. And I can tell you, Honorable Sam George has played a major role on around me. Okay. The reason be that through him, I have more alignment on the procedures okay. of, of parliamentary work, okay. Okay? okay? Through him, I've come to know more things about the party that probably others do not know. So you, you being the PA to Honorable Sam George, I think then you have a lot of um, knowledge about him, who he is and all that. Um, looking at Honorable Sam George as you are working with him being your boss, is he this type of person who is, is um, let me say, um, a type of person who would like to push you to do something because looking at him people say um, he is a man that uh, he brags and all those things but looking at him being with him um, one word how can you describe Honorable Sam George? One word? Yes. Honorable Sam George is a fantastic <laughs> person. Uh, in what way? In what way? Yeah. You see when you are far just as you said you might think that uh, he is too known yeah. and the other accolades that people give him. Okay. But when you get closer to him, you know that Honorable Sam George is a God sent person. Okay. Honorable Sam George is a straightforward person. He speaks the truth. If the thing is white, he will tell you it's white. Okay. If it is black, he will tell you it is black. And that is the reason why people think that He's too known. Okay. And those that say such, such things, anytime you ask them, what at all has he done for you to say that he's too known? They don't know what to say. You get it. Okay. He defends the party. Okay. On TV, he speaks to fat and he speaks with fat. So when you get closer to him, it's one person that will motivate you. Okay to attain higher level. Wow. And I can tell you, brother, as I sit here, Honorable Sam George has motivated me in so many ways, okay. especially when it comes to education. He will tell you education has no end, as we may all be aware. And so every time he asks you, what will you want to do? What is the next step? After every degree, he will sit you down, what is the next step? And as we speak, Honorable Sam George has paid for over 100 students in the tertiary institution. Wow. We have over 15 students pursuing master's degree. Okay. And so he pushes them to make sure that their potentials will be seen okay. by everyone. And so when people sit back to speak things about him, well... All right. yeah. So uh, Honorable Abed, we will uh, we'll continue with the conversation though. But we would like to go for a very quick commercial break and when we are back we'll continue with um, the other ones that is pertaining to uh, the constituency, the country Ghana and then the other ones that we would like to. So please stick and stay with us as we go for a quick commercial break.
kama ebi amao Hi, Mammy's Garden. Ni pub no a ho and a jinano. Na uba has say, I send your mammy's garden a kind, no air, sapper, pepper, me crampo, I am in one, a broom, a dream, in sea, as yes, so. Upper sell your bed, the in some bay now, pe, upe wine. Day in Sandoko doko. You see, the old numa obe rivi, and I said, the old numa obet na hoboko, bibia o pibiano, and payura has say, no, yahoo said, bibia wa has say, fruit juice. In some bay, by mammy's garden, paba. A ha air fair come a come and yama ope beans soon. Ubenya wa has the enu, nymphony and a yachicha, a dear two screen soon. In sister ope baby, papa pat, na e di dia numa. So welcome back from the commercial break. Um, we would like to remind you that this program is sponsored by Mommy's Garden. Um, in fact, if you want to um, have a program, if you want to um, get a, a food or a meal for yourself, you have no other place to come than to move directly to Dawenya, just opposite Anita Sports, and then come 
and have or feel at home at mommy's garden. The reason why it is called mommy's garden is because when you are in your house, you know how mommy treats you. Those treatments will be given to you here. They are also into guest housing and all those ones. So if you want to relax after eating, just come here and then relax here. Mommy's garden is always there for all of us. Now we would like to move to um, Honorable to continue with our conversation. Now let's go to um, the Ningo uh, Pram Pram constituency and then let's look at matters out of the constituency. The first one has to do with um, our roads. Our roads. Now, many people are saying that just because we are closer to Honorable Sam George, that is why we are throwing this question to you. But he, he might be the right person to answer this question. But then because you are his PA, we want to direct it to you because we know that you have idea about some of these things in our constituency. So we want to find out. People are saying that the Dawenya Afenya Road has been given to a contractor and um, one of the uh, things that people heard was that this particular road that we are talking about, um, a, a minute or a statement was read at Parliament House and it was said that the road has already been contracted or the construction has already been done. Uh, we want to find out how true is this first and what efforts has MP for Ningo Pram Pram made towards this uh, construction of road? in the constituency. All right, thank you. When you talk about a statement being done, yeah. made on the on the House of, of Parliament, yeah. for that that for that one I will leave it for the MP okay. himself anytime you meet him All right. to speak on that. Okay. But when it comes to the efforts is made, yeah. I can tell you that if there should be any MP that has made efforts with regards to the roads in any constituency out of the 275 MPs I can tell you that our MP stands tall okay. among all of them that is Honorable Sam George Honorable Sam George okay and the road minister when His Excellency Nana Kufuado appointed him again okay. to as the road minister okay during one of his vetting he made all and sundry aware that Honorable Sam George has been worrying him. It's one of the MPs okay. that worries him when it comes to roads right. and constituency. Okay. And so with the roads, I can tell you that he's done a lot of work. With letters here and there. Sometimes okay. I, I send the letters to the ministries. Okay. He meets the minister himself okay. and a lot of things. So he has done his best. Uh, when it comes to the, well, you see, in the Ningo Pram Pram constituency, I think one of the problems that we face as constituents is that the road network, if you look at what we just spoke about, um, the, the drivers or the taxi drivers over there or people who normally use that street, they always complain about that particular road as well as um, a road in um, Ningo, Ningo Township itself. So um, looking at it, as you have said, the Honourable uh, Member has played a very um, vital role when it comes to the construction of road in the community. But what do you think are some of the things preventing this to be implemented in the constituency? Okay, you see, one of the things that is destroying the nation, mm -hmm. and for that matter most of the constituencies, happens to be our way of politicking. Okay. Let me use the Afenya Dawenya Road, for example. Okay. That road, I am fully aware, has been given to a contractor okay. by name Simen. Okay. Simen is a staunch member of the MPP, no doubt about it. Oh, okay. And so, some time back, you can all notice that he came to site. Yeah. He started. But you know, with this road construction, if you don't have the capital to start and to end it, sometimes along the, the way, you have to go and seek for funds. Okay. And so one of the major reasons why we, we are not seeing any efforts being made on the road as we speak has to do with funds. Okay. And the way we politicize things in the constituency and for that matter the country. Okay. The reason be that this Dawenya Afenya road is neither for NDC or MPP. Yeah. When the road is being constructed, nobody will tell you that it is NDC cars 
that will use the road. Yeah. Or MPP people that will use the road. The road is meant for everybody. Okay. And the road, this Dawanya Finya road, plays a critical role. Look at the, the port expansion. Look at the factories in Tema. Most of the, 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 the things they use in the expansion, the projects and things, are from Shayos. They always fly this road. So why are we playing politics when it comes to this road? People do say that this is a stronghold of the NDC. And so when they construct the road, you know, it will, it will bring favor to the, to the NDC and for that matter, Honorable Sam George. But that is not it. If we are well-meaning Ghanaians, we need to know that road construction has nothing to do with politics. Because at the end of the day, we all ply it. MPs fly it. Yeah. And may we ply that road. A lot of the MPs fly that road. So why are we politicizing roads? So this is a good call. I want to call on His Excellency, okay. the President of the Republic of Ghana. Okay. I want to call on the road minister, Honorable Amuakwata, hmm. that they should listen to the plea of the MP. They should lead, listen to the plea of the constituents okay. to make sure that the Dawenya Afenya road would be constructed. Okay. It will go a long way to help us. They shouldn't think about the constituency as the NDC people. Sure. At the end of the day, of course, MPP also gets votes here. Yeah, yeah. And so any time it comes to road, if we are trying to politicize it, this is what happens. Okay. We don't move forward. Okay. So I plead with them. They should look at it, give it a second thought, and make sure that that road has been constructed All before right. they leave power come 2024. Okay, so um, let, let's continue with that. But still on these issues in the Ningo Pram constituency, um, we were told that uh, when you come again, when you move to the health sector in the in the constituency, it is very bad, and a whole lot of issues moving here and there, saying that the honourable member is not playing his role as expected to to be doing um, when it comes to the health um, sector in the constituency. What do you have to say about that? Okay, so let me use this medium to once again educate people. All right. Viewers, I want to use this medium to educate viewers. You see, in the constituency, we have the district chief executive. Okay. He is more or less like the president okay. because he's a rep, a representative of the president okay. in the district okay. or in the constituency. Yeah. And we have our MP. These two people have different roles to play. Okay. The MP makes law. Okay. That is why they have what we call the House of Parliament. Sure. The DCE is the representative of what? The president. And so most of the developmental works should be handled by who? The DCE. What the MP does is to support those developmental work. You see, others are saying that the honorable member is not um, in talking terms with the DCE. I don't know whether it is because of politics or I don't know what, what is really going on. But looking at it, is it because of that or is, is something let, let me Let that? me quickly say something. Yes. It is a fallacy. Wow. There's no truth in it. Oh, okay. Since the DC has been given the note, okay. there's no program that our MP does in the constituency without inviting the DC. So it means that and everything is cool. Everything is okay. And anytime he invites the DC, the DC comes. Oh, okay. Our, we've done a lot of programs that the DC came and we had it together. Okay. And so I want to educate people, like I was saying. Yeah. So let's, let's take it for instance. People talk of MPs common fund, MPs common fund. Now, this is it. Every quarter, three, three, three months, yeah. okay, we call it quarter. Yeah. Let's assume that the presidency, or yes, they give the district assembly 100 cities, okay? Sure. Out of the 100 cities, the MPs portion of the 100 cities is 5 cities, 50 pesos. Wow. So it means that this uh, comment we make around... It's 5 CD 50 pesos. Oh, yeah. Now, the 94 CD 50 pesos 
goes to the district. The DC is in charge of that. Wow. So I don't understand how come people always call on the MP when it comes to developmental projects. The MP's portion of the 100 cities that is being allocated to the district, his is 5 CD 50 pesos. Wow. So if someone is having 5 CD 50 pesos and the district gets the 94 CD 50 pesos, who should be held responsible when it comes to developmental work? The district also have what we call IGF, eternally generated funds. Okay. They take property rates, they do a whole lot of things. Those monies that people pay, let's ask ourselves, what does the district use it for? For What developmental projects are we seeing? And that is not to say that the MP is not doing anything about the health sector. Okay. Out of the MP's 5 CD 50 percent, okay? okay? There have been times we visited both polyclinics. Oh, okay. Prom Polyclinic and then the Nigo Polyclinic. We've made various donations. Okay. Various donations. Evidence are there. Pictorial evidence is there for people to see it for themselves. There are days that we've made donations of PPEs, okay. machines, a whole lot of things. Even last year, people delivered, okay? People delivered in both hospitals. Okay. Getting money to pay for them to go home became issue. The MP has to stand in, give them parcels, pay for all those bills. I mean, the MP has done a lot of things when it comes to the proper polyclinic and then the Nigo polyclinic. Okay. Especially when it, 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 the COVID came in. Oh, yeah. I mean, we've donated a lot of things. Out of the 5 CD 50 percent, the MP always gets. <laughs> Ask yourself, what is the, the district also doing? Oh, yeah. One thing we need to know is that the MP and the DC must help to make sure that the things we want will be able to get. But uh, like I said, any time we try to play politics with the with developmental issues, that is what happens. Okay. So look, looking at it, it means that um, the MP is really doing his part or what he's supposed to do, he's really doing it. But um, so we still um, continue with the conversation with uh, Honorable um, Abed Nego Afle. Um, um, let, let's let's move on to what is really happening in our country, Ghana. Now, um, just about two hours ago, I checked the our uh, dollar rates to the city and realized that it is moving um, ahead. Now we are somewhere around twelve cities, sixty-eight pesos and all that. Looking at it, what what do you have to say about the economy now as a nation? What do you have to say about it? You see, Ghana's economy as we speak, it's in total mess. Wow. But when you say, people think that you are anti-MPP, and for that matter, you are against the government, okay. okay? Truth be told, these people told lies, and for that matter, people voted for them, and they came into office. Before NDC was leaving office, the dollar rate is around 3 cd 70 pesos. And even with that, the so-called economic measure, now the vice president, Dr. Baumia, told the whole world that when the fundamentals are weak, <laughs> the dollar rate will what? expose you. The, the exchange rate yeah. will expose you. Yeah. And for that matter, I mean, they voted for them. Now look at the, our total debt as we speak. When you keep borrowing, borrowing, and you don't have measures to pay, you keep importing, importing, and your import is, exceeds your export, don't expect anything sure. than a total mess of the economy. That is what we are seeing today. Banks are being closed down. Today, if you have your own money in the bank, they give you certain amount that you can cash. 
Look at what is happening at Data Bank. Sure. A whole finance minister. His bank is the Data Bank. Sure. They've taken everything upon themselves. So, okay. so it means that the the what for what you are saying, we are realizing that the country is really going towards a direction where if we care is not taken, it cannot be controlled. The, econo the economy of the country cannot be con uh, controlled. Exactly. What are the people in the, that is the, the NDC people in the Ningo Pram Pram constituency saying about this particular economy um, of Ghana? Well, for us, you know, everybody listens to our MP. Sure. And for those of us that don't have that means to get to the radio stations and staffs. He most of the time speaks on behalf of the party and for that matter, Nigo Pram Pram constituency. Sure. We are saying that if care is not taken, where will head towards come me, not even next year. A month from come now. Come May. We are in February. Okay. April May. April May. Two months from now. We will not like it. So we are pleading with His Excellency Akufuado to change the finance minister. So it means that you are also in support because that is the next question I wanted to ask. I wanted to find out whether you are also in support of the president changing or doing reshuffling when it comes to the finance aspect of the country. But why not? We've given you the entire wealth of the nation to handle. You call yourself economic messiah and you have your economic management team which the vice president is included. And you, the cousin of the president, you can't manage it. Brother, if you be placed in an organization and every day the organization is rather retrogressing and not improving, moving forward, what do we do as the manager? But, but the... the, the the finance minister is a cousin to the president. So I don't think the president will, would have to deal with him as maybe he will be dealing with people who are not related so to him. So you see why we, ask, we keep saying that now the country has become what? Friends. Family and friends. Family and friends government. Okay. okay. If you appoint a brother, me sitting here, if I should appoint my father, my mother, or my brother, and it's not doing well. It is only appropriate in the best interest of the country to take him out, to let someone else also come to lead us. Okay. If it's his, his own party people, his own MPs are saying, we don't need you. Why should the president keep, still be, keep, keep him there? So in one word, describe the... The, the economy of Ghana <laughs> and also describe the, 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 the presidency now, the country as we speak now. In one word, describe in one Ghana. word. Yes. In one word. Yes. The economy is in shambles. Wow. Yes. So honorable And our, our president is sleeping on the job. He's sleeping. Of course. The He's president. Tired. Wow. He's tired on the job. All right. You see when <laughs> you are seventy eight and above. Definitely, you know, your old age. Yeah. So he's sleeping on the job. Okay. As we speak, he doesn't know, excuse me, he's left from his right. Wow. And so everybody seems to be doing whatever he or she wants. And they are keeping the money for themselves. But trust me, come 2024, they will not form the government again. All right, so that is, we are so great. Then we have, we have heard from him. We have heard from him some of the things that uh, happened in the constituency, what is going on, what Honorable Sam George is also doing to help the constituency to grow, and then what his, his take on the country's economy. Now, we want you to subscribe to our channel, follow us on Facebook, that is 2A Radio and TV slash TV, and then also follow us on YouTube 2A TV for more videos and for more interviews. We know that uh, you, you are aware that Mommy's Garden is the one that is sponsoring this program. Come here and enjoy yourself. The next time we meet again, we will learn more about what is going on in our constituency, not only in Ningo Pram Pram constituency, but other constituency, and then in the country, Ghana. Thank you so much for being part of our conversation today. Bye-bye.